Yo, yo, I'm Drew Gilchrist and I'm sorry that I've been gone for a week. I've been taking like a little bit of a tolerance break and like, I'm not, I'm sure that nobody believed me as I was saying that, but uh, no, the reason I've been gone for a week is because I actually was really badly injured. I was skating on the weekend and messed my ankle up pretty bad, so I was just laying in bed in pain for like a week. But during this time, when I was on a live stream, somebody asked me to make this video and I've kind of wanted to make this video for a long time and talk about tolerance breaks because I get asked about tolerance breaks all the time. But quickly before we get into this, need to have a message from our sponsor of the day, Dynavap. Yo, Dynavap are actually sick. They have these completely non-electric vapes and you can even put a little coil in there and then do dabs out of it just with like a jet liner. They've got a bunch of new products coming out that you guys will definitely be seeing on the channel soon. But they wanted me to let you guys know that they're actually hosting a free online concert tomorrow. There's going to be a bunch of live performances and the pre-sale for the new Dynavaps goes up tomorrow. So definitely, definitely check that out. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Central, which is midnight UK time. I'm going to leave a link for that in the pinned comment down below. And remember, helping out the sponsor really really helps out the channel so like even clicking on a link really really helps out and you can get 10% off anything on the Dynavap website with Drusif420 as your code. So guys thank you for all the support and big up Dynavap for their support as well. Let's get on with this video. So do you need a tolerance break? Well a lot of people are just going to be like yes you do straight up without a doubt but I'm not necessarily sure that that is the case. Now I think a lot of people just see things from their point of view and then they just are like sweet it works for me this is how it happens and that's how it's going to be for everyone else but that it's not really how the world works and it's not really how the human body works. Everyone's different and the way people's body reacts to things is always going to be different depending on who you're asking. And because of that, you get so many people being like, yeah, you have to have a tolerance break. You have to have it for the exact same length of time as I do and, and all of that. So I want to go through my thoughts on tolerance breaks, some of my experiences, and then some of what I know from talking to, you know, multiple people over the last five years. So for myself, I have a medical condition that requires me to consume pretty much every day. Now, I'm not really going to go through the medical condition here because I really don't like getting into all that stuff, like really personally, just in the middle of YouTube videos. But just know it affects my adrenaline. And because of that, I just get like mad anxiety, mad paranoia, like all day. So I smoke to get rid of that. So if I was to have like a tolerance break, I just wouldn't be taking my medication and the symptoms from my condition would just you know, come back and be really bad. And I'd have just as bad of a quality of life as I had before I started taking medication. So for someone like me, it's not really worth it to take a tolerance break, but I don't think that I would actually need a tolerance break anyway. So the way I look at this is I think the way everyone experiences tolerance is different to everyone else. And I feel like everyone has some sort of a cap to as high as their tolerance can go. This is going to be really hard for me to explain, but I'm going to try. So think back to when you first smoked. You got really stoned, right? And then the second time you smoke, it doesn't get you quite as high. So that's your tolerance getting higher and higher as you know you smoke more and more. So I think that these diminishing returns kind of stop for people at different points. So for myself, I find that my tolerance stops getting higher after I've started smoking daily for like two, three days. So like if I've been smoking all day one day, all day the next, and then all day on that third day, my tolerance doesn't really get any higher than that. Like it, like when I smoke a joint, it won't be getting me less high every time. It will just be sort of capping out at about that point. And I've met some people whose diminishing returns don't stop happening until after about three weeks. So, you know, for me after like three days, you know, that's where it stops and I don't get less high from every single joint. But there's some people where that keeps going on and on and on and every joint they're smoking, they get less high and less high and less high until about three weeks goes by and then they're not feeling anything at all. And obviously at that point, that's where they're like, oh, I have to take a tolerance break. They stop for like a couple days or maybe a week, maybe a couple weeks, and then the tolerance resets and they're back to where they were before. Now, also on the other end of the spectrum, I've also met people who, you know, they could smoke like two joints and then that's where their diminishing returns stop. And they will always just get as high as if, you know, it's your second joint that you've ever tried, which is crazy. So it's, it's so different, but I think it's not too hard for people to comprehend, but it's obviously... I guess it's just a matter of luck and genetics and your experiences, I guess, but that's the way I've kind of seen it. Now, keep in mind, this is just me saying what my opinion is on this from my experience over the last couple years of speaking to people, my own tolerance experience, and just sort of, you know, hearing what other people's thoughts are as well, just in general. And I think this is how it kind of comes out for most people. So do you need a tolerance break? That's the question. And I don't know. 
It's up to you, I guess. I'd like to know in the comments down below, how long does it take for you for those diminishing returns to sort of stop happening? And like, how long's it taking you before a joint is getting you just as high as the one that you smoked before? Or even not getting you high at all? I'd love to know what your experiences are down in the comments down below, because I feel like we're gonna get a huge mix of like a bunch of different spectrums. Like there's gonna be someone who's like, oh, I get the same amount of high all the time, I smoke every day. And then there's gonna be somebody else who's gonna be like, yeah, after three weeks, I feel nothing and then I can't smoke for like a month. I bet it's gonna be everywhere, but I'd love to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Yo, did you know that only 50% of the people who watch these videos are even subscribed to the channel? Yo, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button down here. Hit the notification bell as well because I'm not gonna be in your recommended forever. Definitely hit that bell, otherwise, yeah, you might not be seeing my videos for a bit of a while if YouTube just decides to do that. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. I'm gonna be live streaming later on today at like 9 p.m. And definitely, definitely check out Dynavap. The link for them will be in the pinned comment down below tomorrow, midnight. They'll be doing that mad stream and uh, yeah, new product releases and everything. So yeah, people, check that. Thank you for supporting the sponsors and I'll see you guys pretty soon. Hopefully I won't wait another week before I make a video. Like legit, my ankle was hurting so bad that I couldn't even like sit in my chair properly without like constantly having to move and shit. So yeah, um, people, see you soon. Peace.